All right, so welcome again to our first workshop of four here this winter for aquatic invasive species work in Minnesota on behavior change for AIS prevention. Um, we'll be starting off today with my presentation about uh, behavior change in AIS prevention, the work that Minnesota DNR has been doing, uh, and then um, move to Tony. If Tony, you're on here today, just chime in and let me know you're here. Yep, um, I'm here. Awesome. So you're up next at 1.30 with your Lake Pledge app. Then we'll take a quick break and have Justin Townsend talk about the check-in, check-out for AIS prevention um, pilot program. And then uh, wrap up with Bill Granches talking about his five-star Lake Service Provider Initiative. So that's what we've got on the table today. Uh, each presenter has about 15 minutes for their presentation with five minutes for questions afterwards. And then we should have some time at the end of the workshop to dive into any more specific discussion items that um, people would like to discuss. So with that, um, just a reminder, everyone to keep muted if you're not presenting or um, asking a question, but we will have um, open questions uh, after each of the presentations. So if there are any questions, you can type them in the chat or just chime in now. Otherwise, I'll just dive right into my presentation. Uh, and you, as you can see, for those just joining, people are entering their name, organization, and favorite winter activity into the chat just to get to know some of the people on the call here today. Now I'm going to switch my presentation over. And April, if you could let me know you're seeing my presentation stream. Looks great. Awesome, thanks. All righty. So um, to talk about behavior change for AIS prevention here in Minnesota, um, I'm talking about um, the thing we're all trying to achieve as AIS program managers or um, people interested in aquatic invasive species prevention. How do we get people from intending, intending to do an action to actually taking action? Just because someone knows or intends to take action doesn't mean they always do. So how do we get, for example, pictured here, um, our uh, lake residents to dry their docks and lifts for 21 days before moving them to another water body? And there's, there's a process for this. It's called community-based social marketing. It can help us bridge this gap between intention and action. So community-based social marketing is a social, social science approach to foster sustainable, environmentally friendly behaviors over the long term. It goes beyond uh, typical information behaviors and bridging that gap between intention and action. You can see the five steps listed here. You know, first, you start with selecting behaviors that you want people to adopt. Then you uncover barriers and benefits to people adopting those behaviors. And then you develop strategies to help people adopt those barriers by overcoming, adopt those behaviors by overcoming barriers and promoting motivators. And then you want to pilot those strategies at a local level. So you can test out to see what works in local communities. And then we use all of that information to implement broadly and evaluate. So those, those are the five steps of CBSM, if you hear me use that um, acronym. So um, CBSM for AIS Prevention in Minnesota, the DNR has um, been doing this work for about three years now. And you can see all the things we've done listed here. All the reports are available on our website. And so I'm just gonna give you the golden nuggets of each of the, um, of all the things we've found through this three years of study so that you can use it for your AIS programming at the local level. And we started with literature reviews, expert panels, ranking behaviors, three different surveys, a working session, moving forward report with uh, strategies, a workshop for local partners, grant funded pilot programs, community asset mapping, 
And our next step is to wrap that up in a nice bow and implement broadly and evaluate. And you can restart your work at any point on these steps, depending on the behaviors you want to focus on and the audiences you want to work with. So the first part of this project was identifying pathways of spread. I think it's important to note that watercraft are not the only pathway for AIS introduction and spread in Minnesota. In fact, there's live bait, gear and equipment, the retail plant trade, and the aquarium trade that are all pathways for introduction and spread of AIS in Minnesota. And it's important that we focus on all of these. So how do we choose what to focus on? We ranked the top 10 behaviors uh, related to these pathways. And you can see the top behaviors relate to the retail plant and aquarium trades, accurately identifying, installing, purchasing uh, low risk species, and then properly disposing of those species when they're no longer wanted. It also relates to the gear and equipment, such as air drying docks and lifts for 21 days and making sure all visible debris is removed from them, as well as live bait and the disposal of unused live bait in the garbage. So these are the top 10 behaviors identified through the CBSM process that we can target in Minnesota to have affect the most change in behavior. So in order to gather this information, we looked at surveys for uh, um, anglers and their use of live bait and boats, the shoreline residents and their movement of water-related equipment, and then water garden and aquarium hobbyists, which I'll refer to as hobbyists, um, their possession, and live, possession of live organisms. So the angler and shoreline survey we did in 2019, the hobbyist survey we did in this past year in the summer. And so uh, we did the surveys to better understand these stakeholder groups um, in the activities they participate in and the behaviors that we wish them to adopt. So we gathered some baseline data, like do you fish with live bait? How often do you fish? Do you use a boat while fishing? How many of you have you know, previously owned water later equipment? How many aquarium owners have live plants and animals? And the same with pond owners. So just gathering baseline information about those user groups. And a majority of Minnesotans have a very strong supportive attitude towards preventing the spread of AIS. You can see that over 90% agree that preventing the spread is the right thing to do. But less, they agree less that other people are taking action to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species, which means there's a gap between what they believe that they do and what they believe other people do. And so that social norm could be um, increased a bit and hope, hopefully we can increase that. For AIS laws, uh, Minnesotans report that they're aware of AIS laws. You know, over 80% said that they are moderately to extremely knowledgeable about AIS laws. But when we asked anglers if they've released bait, 36% of them had. When we asked shoreline residents about the 21 day dry rule, 49% of them were unaware. And for the hobbyists, 94% uh, knew it was illegal to release animals and plants, but 20% don't know, uh, don't have the information they need to avoid the purchase of aquatic invasive species. And 35% didn't know which species are not supposed to be sold or owned in Minnesota. So some barriers to adoption of these behaviors uh, they were not significant. Uh, you know, 50% of anglers, 72% of shoreline residents, and around 40% of hobbyists said nothing would prevent them from taking action. Some of the barriers for bait disposal were concerned about the smell and animal activity and not wanting to kill the bait. And for boats, it was not having the right tools or there's too much traffic at the launch. For shoreline residents and their equipment, um, it was a timing issue. So the buyer wanting it right away or them wanting it right away instead of waiting the 21 days. And for aquarium owners and water gardeners, they would rather share or sell the unwanted plants rather than dispose of them. And as far as motivators are concerned, uh, Minnesotans are motivated to prevent the spread of AIS um, and to make a positive impact on their community and the environment. So just they're motivated by those facts alone. 
And the, some of them are also motivated uh, by knowing something is illegal or that they could receive a fine for doing so. So, um, and for hobbyists, you know, a, a majority would, re would be willing to buy non-invasive alternative species and 79% would be more likely to purchase from a store uh, that had proof of participation in a statewide invasive species programming. It's important to note that all of these audiences have different preferred communication channels. Anglers prefer to receive their invasive species information at boat launches and bait shops, fishing accesses. So at the locations where they're take, uh, performing these activities. Shoreline residents prefer to receive their information from lake associations and newsletters and traditional media like TV and newspaper. And hobbyists prefer to receive their information online at pet stores, through brochures and social media. Uh, there were all trusted sources of information. Uh, Minnesota DNR was ranked the highest, uh, along with local municipalities and environmental organizations and universities, including Extension, as well as uh, associations related to their um, audience. So lake associations, fishing clubs, and hobbyist organizations. Ooh, so <clears throat> how can we use all of this information um, to craft the right messages, use trusted messengers, and use preferred messaging channels? to promote the adoption and consistent practice of aquatic invasive species prevention behaviors. Here are some recommendations for working with anglers. Uh, developing clear guidelines on disposal techniques, partnering with bait shops and fishing tournaments, providing bait disposal bins at public water accesses, and providing bait disposal bags. For cleaning and draining watercraft, providing boat cleaning areas with tools and equipment, and continuing to offer boat decontamination stations. The recommendations for shoreline residents are, again, to develop clear rules and guidelines on the movement and cleaning of previously owned water-related equipment, uh, partnering with lake associations to communicate with the residents and provide education and training, identify and promote credible lake service providers, and providing a cash incentive to dry for 21 days. And for the hobbyists, Again, it's creating resources to help them avoid purchasing and spreading invasive species, building on those social norms and best practices, and fostering rehoming and take back programs for unwanted pets and plants. Uh, working with uh, the hobbyist industry, you know, people that sell invas uh, organisms in trade, uh, we want to engage that industry about AIS and uh, establish a common position. Uh, we could create a voluntary retail certification program, um, you know, AIS aware program. Uh, we could create re retailer training and resources on plant and other species identification. And we can also partner with retailers to jointly deliver programs. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to take a quick note on um, taking commitments here. Commitments are a very strong behavior change tool. When people commit to taking action, uh, they see themselves differently. You, you, know, you see yourself differently when you say, I am a blood donor, I'm a recycler, I'm a volunteer, I stop invasive species. Uh, and there are different levels of commitments. And um, the first level is a verbal commitment if you ask someone, can I count on you to dry your dock and lift for 21 days before moving it? Um, then the next level that's a little bit stronger is a written commitment where you say, can I count on you to dispose of your bait properly? Can you sign this uh, list of people that all um, pledged to do the same? And then you can make those, pub those commitments public. You can, uh, other people can see that they've made a commitment to taking action. So a clean drain dispose sticker on a boat trailer, or uh, I pledge to never release my pets, a little sticker at the uh, pet store. Just some examples of commitments that can be gathered. And then another piece of um, CBSM is evaluation. Um, <clears throat> it's important to identify metrics to track 
and use evaluation tools to track them. Surveys are a really popular and um, easy tool, once you get a hang of them, uh, to use to evaluate programs. Uh, you can also use observations, interviews, focused groups, and gathering commitments. You can use the results to measure the effectiveness of your public engagement activities. So um, we had some, we funded some, uh, the DNR had a grant program to fund pilots uh, to design behavior change intervention strategies, deliver those strategies to their local jurisdiction, gather data about their audience, evaluate change in behavior, and summarize project results. And so we had six angler projects, six boater, three boater projects, and two lakeshore resident projects that I'll highlight here. For the bait disposal pilot programs, they had public water, they provided bait disposal bins at public water accesses with permission from the public water access owner. And the, um, some of the successes they had was they did find bait and bait related trash in those bins. Um, by providing regular maintenance, they didn't see misuse of the bins for other garbage. Uh, they gathered commitments and they did a multi-organization survey. Some of the challenge were, challenges were that the, there was a low survey response. Uh, a lot of time and resources are needed for regular maintenance of the bins. Uh, additional bin labels didn't prevent some misuse. And uh, there was a only a little bit of bait fish found in some of the compost bins. And um, so it was difficult to compost when it was such a small amount of material. And with the 21 day dry pilot program, one program provided uh, incentives, a cash incentive to uh, dry their dock and lift for 21 days. And another provided a training program for shoreline residents. Uh, they increased that awareness in the 21 day dry law. Uh, they got that information through surveys. There's a multi-organization collaboration by creating a video about uh, what shoreland owners can do to prevent the spread of invasive species. And um, public commitments were gathered. Uh, yard signs, which is in the top right of the screen, were posted in yards. Uh, some of the challenges with the 21 day dry initiatives are that the, the movement of equipment is a very infrequent activity. Um, and with the organization that offered reimbursement up to, I think, $200, no one requested reimbursement for the pilot lakes that it was at. So there wasn't interest. There wasn't an interest in that incentive. And then finally, there were uh, some boat cleaning pilot programs. Uh, some of the successes were providing tools at accesses or to boaters directly, and those tools were used and appreciated, and the commitments were gathered. I think some of the challenges were that more observations are, are needed to see what people are doing at accesses. Uh, and it's also, for those that worked with fishing tournaments, it's hard to work a more AIS prevention messages and activities into already busy fishing tournaments. And finally, um, I mentioned community asset mapping at the beginning of this presentation. It identifies the community's existing resources, organizations, programs, and individuals, and their interconnections. You can see the overarching categories listed in this diagram here. And what turned out is we have a database now with over 800 entities ready for everyone to use. And this information will be posted on our website shortly. So with that, uh, my final takeaways are that, uh, or the final takeaways that I hope you take away here today is that information alone does not change behavior. Minnesotans care and take action to prevent the spread of AIS. Baseline statewide data is available. Please use it. Um, barriers are different depending on the audience and the desired behavior. People are more likely to take action if they make a commitment. It's important to use preferred communication channels and trusted messengers. And evaluation is necessary. And there are simple ways to integrate it into programming. 
for instance, doing local surveys, uh, which can be compared to the stat statewide data to show trends locally and over time. So uh, in the end, with this baseline data collection, we're gonna use the right messages, the trusted messengers and preferred communication channels to promote the adoption and consistent practice of aquatic invasive species prevention behaviors by target audiences in Minnesota. So now I want to ask, um, can I count on you all to try one behavior change approach in your AIS programming this year? And want to make sure I acknowledge um, <clears throat> my partners on this work, uh, Azentive, Beyond Attitude Consulting, uh, staff at the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources and funding through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and the State and Interstate Aquatic Nuisance Species Management Plan Grant Program. So with that, I will end my slideshow and see if there are any questions. April, are there any questions that will come through? Oh, I guess one one thing I did ask for a commitment. So if you will use the little reaction or raise hand feature, if you want to raise your hand saying that you'll use behavior change tools in your programming this year. Oh, look at those hands going up. Whoop, whoop. Look at all those public commitments. Your name is attached to your hand saying that you will pledge to use behavior change tools in your programming this year. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> All right, so and you have to go back in and click to un unraise your hand. Um, so be sure to do that after this, but thank you everyone. All right, we have, I think five minutes for questions. I got a little extra five minutes at the beginning there, so. Um, hey, Jeff, are you raising your hand to ask a question or is your hand still up because you are so excited to commit to behavior change? Hand down. OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that was a lot of information. All of the reports are available on our website, which I will now I should just post that in my. In the chat, I will post that in the chat. Um, yes, Doug, I can share the presentation with you. With everyone, actually, that's the plan. All right, and uh, so a preview of the database, talk more about its use. Uh, that's from Justin. Yes, so about that. <clears throat> yeah, the database is um, a sortable database. It has like 30 different columns about um, where the organization or individual is located, you know, what target audiences they focus on, um, their mission, uh, their primary contact information, um, all of this stuff um, associated with each organization. And we're hoping to uh, eventually translate that into more of a living database where not only DNR staff, but other staff like the ones on the call here today can update that information to just make that a more robust um, searchable uh, database of contacts for um, aquatic invasive species and protecting Minnesota waters in general. Um, the spreadsheet focuses not just on AIS aware uh, organizations and individuals, but water related organizations and individuals in Minnesota. Excellent. Thanks, Tina. Oh, here's another question from Amanda. No one took the 221 day incentive. Do you know the reason? Did they? Uh, do the previous methods without asking for reimbursement? Um, preventative, not previous, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're not sure uh, why they didn't take it. Um, it was offered to a small set of lakes in Becker County. 
So maybe no one needed to move equipment from one water body to another because it only applied for moving equipment from one water body to another. They focused on uh, lakes that had zebra mussels. So they wanted to target lakeshore owners on lakes with zebra mussels to get the incentive to dry their equipment for 21 days because that's a really important thing to do, especially if zebra mussels are present in your lake. Um, so uh, Carl Koenig with Becker County would be your contact for that, um, more information about that. And I think um, Cole Lowen with Stearns County has also tried the incentive program and they haven't gotten much interest in that as well. So it's either a very infrequent activity or it's something that they can do on their own without needing reimbursement. Thanks, good question. Any other questions for Tina? Bill adds, uh, was the incentive also for the LSPs? No, it was just for the Lakeshore owner. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. And Doug uh, asks, in terms of commitment and communication, did any of the approaches use, um, any approaches used examine commitment level and their networking circles? Research he's seen indicates difference is stronger when it's communicated with oh with close friends and relatives. Those um, and so, any thoughts on that? Oh, got some links here. Um, so uh, Justin and um, Justin will get into that, and Tony will get into that with their upcoming presentations about collecting commitments. Uh, there were just very few commitments gathered. Um, and there wasn't any follow up beyond the commitments gathered from a single individual on the pilot program. So those connections weren't quite mapped, but they definitely could be in the future. Thanks, Tina. Nothing else is popping up in the chat at this point if you want to transition. All right. So, Justin, or sorry, Tony, you are up next. And look, you're already sharing your screen. That's great. We're seeing the full PowerPoint application. And if you're speaking, we're not hearing you. How about if I unmute myself? That would help. Mm -hmm. Do you think <laughs> I'm a rookie or something after? Um, if you're hearing noise in the background, I apologize. I had to come to a caribou for high speed internet today. Um, so I need you to do the intro every time I give my presentation. OK, uh, exactly <laughs> what you've done and what you say is why we initiated this project at Hennepin County. And it yep, is and one of the guidelines that we have, which is to address all pathways. So thank you, Tina, that you did my intro. Uh, <laughs> just absolutely fantastic. You're welcome, um, Tony, and make sure to introduce yourself as well. Tony Bruff, Hennepin County. So uh, our program, which is called lakepledge.com, and I think I've talked to probably about half of you about this already. So some of this would be repeat and some of this would be brand new. And or at least some answering some questions that I've gotten on other presentations. So again, this is community based social marketing on, on steroids. We, we're really trying to get a lake wide commitment from a trusted messenger, which is basically the neighbors. We're creating this lake wide level uh, group pledge. The best um, participation increases we got was directly from peer to peer. When peers, neighbors are talking to neighbors, trying to create a sustained behavior change that stays 100% positive. It's all personable to just personal to just their activities and specific to their activities. They can all do it from the phone, which is the way everybody wants to do things these, these days. And my biggest thing that has struck a chord with some of these people is if they get 90% of their lake homeowners to take this pledge, they get into the category of called a legendary lake. And I just tell them, you know, next time you're talking to a council member or the state legislator or anything, and you're looking to ha get something, you can say, hey, we take we took care of ourselves. We're we're a legendary lake. Now I want you to dot dot dot. It doesn't even have to be about aquatic invasive species at that point. Um, it's just you just come from such a stronger place when you've taken care of your own association members first. So um, this is what it looks like. The, the landing page. Uh, Minnesota Bond was wonderful enough to be our celebrity endorsers for this. And um, 
we're going to do this real quick. So, Tina, if the volume doesn't come up or the sound doesn't come up, you tell me, right? All right. But we're going to pretend we're from Weaver Lake because that was my best, uh, uh, the highest participated lake. And I'm just going to do a fake email. Something, something, something. And then you could do just a one, two, three, three letter password. So everything that's on this page is kind of based off of that community based social marketing. Um, having testimonials from locals, trying to, you know, and I couldn't thank Minnesota Bound enough for, for participating in this. So you can do this. I'll give you um, how to do it as a tester in, in the uh, comment section later. Uh, so basically, they put in the lake. They put in their email address and they do a password. This is where I've had to do the most outreaches. They need to understand that nothing on this is tracked per address. It's all tracked per lake. So you do need to put in your address though, because um, we're trying to get a lake-wide commitment. So I'm going to put in a fake address so it doesn't so it doesn't uh, load up. Here's pretty much all the activities that Tina was just talking about. And you as a homeowner would put in your activities. So the only two that aren't activities are these two. We cannot identify zebra mussels and we can not identify Eurasian milfoil. What's interesting is more people can identify zebra mussels than milfoil from our stats so far, about three to one. So we're going to do it quick here today. Uh, we'll pick uh, Tina, who is be our superstar here, and she's a kayaker. And if we had more activities, we'd put them in there and you'd submit. What's nice is only the activities that you chose come up first. And so right now my pledge is at zero here. And Tina, if this doesn't sound like sound, you're going to tell me, right? Yep. OK, so here's an example of the video that they would see. Boy, it's loading still, sorry. Interesting. <laughs> Tech to your lake, take the pledge. Sounds good. So you're a paddler, a kayaker, canoeer, or stand-up paddleboarder. This pathway for aquatic invasive species is similar to other watercraft. Small plant fragments, water, and small animals can hide inside your watercraft. The harsh reality is that these types of watercraft are easy to move around and we like to explore waters throughout the state. So they're a potential pathway for aquatic invasive species. The actions that you can take to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species are simple. Clean the outside and inside of your watercraft of plants and animals and other debris, and then drain your watercraft and sponge out any excess water inside. If you wanna be extra careful, you can dry your watercraft for five days before using it in another water body. Protect your lake. Take the pledge. OK, so that's a pretty good example of, of what each activity would look like. And if this was one out of four, you'd see my pledge here go up to 25% because it's the only one I picked. It should be 100% and I should have completed my pledge. Nice, huh? There's also a pledge or a bonus badge if everybody in the household household joins. And if you're really a go-getter, you can continue down here and get extra badges for watching one of these other videos or watching them all. Then here's where it kind of gets fun for the homeowners. They get to see, and you can see in this lake, I have 53% of the homes have taken the pledge. And on this lake right now with this tester one, I've completed two of my badges. And here's my leaderboard, and we started this in like July, so we didn't even start it right at open water. These home, these lake associations are going to work again this spring. They even get more, and I think I got six more lakes joining uh, this year. There's some specific information on additional badges there, but here's where it kind of gets fun. You can see, you know, we know eight out of 55 homes here have taken the have selected at least their activities. 
Eight of them say they take their watercraft to other lakes. Super low on this lake. Um, on one of my other lakes, it's 33% pick up their boats and take them to other lakes. Uh, you can see that uh, everybody's got docks just about, uh, a lot of kayakers, a lot of people fish with live bait. So this would kind of um, drive where you might want to do your education down the road. It makes me sad that, you know, only two people sail around to other lakes. And that's basics of what Lake Pledge looks like. Uh, I'm going to close this now. And the other thing that I can just show you real quick is on the back side of this, for those of you that just love stats and, and numbers and reports and all that, you get a lot of reports on the back side. I mean, you can see how many times people clicked on a video. You can see how many times they selected activity but didn't take the pledge. Um, you can see the differences for different lakes. So there's a whole bunch of reporting that's that's really quite interesting on the backside if that's uh, a route that you want to go to. And then I just was going to answer, you know, I've had a lot of people say, how are you going to keep them involved in year two, year three, stuff like that? You notice on our um, leaderboard, it said, you know, Weaver Lake playing since 2021. And the new lakes will be, you know, like Bush Lake will be playing since 2022. Um, we've already kind of done, we're, we're trying to copy some of the success, success, bleh, successful, thank you, activities that you see in some of these other gaming type of things. And it's the way everything seems to be going these days. And so we already use these type of gaming elements in what we have. Down the road, I can envision us creating more gamification ideas, more group activities. Maybe they get tokens. Um, after you get so many tokens, you know, they can buy a hat or a shirt or something like that, or, you know, we got the prizes for them. There could be daily quizzes. And just so if you guys are curious, if this means anything to you, it doesn't mean a lot to me, but there's the platforms. That it's uh, that it includes, and if you want pricing, you can contact Chip Lear directly. Uh, you don't have to use them; that's just who we used, and um, they can give it specific to you on 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 how to incorporate this. I'm offering all the stuff that I I created here at no cost, but there is, if you want to do it in your own county, some things that you would need to. Um, incorporate to make it more specific to your county. So that's my puppy. We do dog agility together and she's a championship dog and I just wanted to see her because that's how I end every presentation. What you got for questions for me today? Watching the chat right now, Tony, I'll let you know. This is what it looks like. Caribou. There, I'll, I'll move it <laughs> and you can uh, stop sharing your screen to uh, Tony. Um, a lot of what we did here is driven really by uh, Tina, their work, and then what my communication staffs have been doing since like 2012 with recycling and some of the other activities. And um, I now will have lakes that have a partial inspection program at the access, a CD3 outpost, and then it, like Weaver Lake, it has a CD3 outpost, it has a partial inspection program, and it's going to have more than 50% of the lakeshore homeowners taking the pledge. I almost feel like we're creating this nice little shield, and it, nothing's going to be foolproof, we all know that, but it is kind of exciting to see what this will look like 10 years from now. Definitely. Any follow up questions for Tony about his presentation? Oh, I was going to put in the chat how to do it if you want to do it. The biggest thing is just don't use any of the preloaded addresses because then you will count as a homeowner on that lake. Unless and there you happen are, to live on one of those lakes, right? Well, then then do it. <laughs> Yeah, um, and there are going to be some changes we're making here this year as we saw some stuff, but nothing nothing really changing the, the format of what you're seeing. 
Okay. We've got, uh, Drew's got a question. He asked uh, any of the lakes participating uh, not have lake associations? So no, because my first year I picked these three lakes on purpose. One, they're right next to each other. And so we created a little competition. <laughs> Two, they are very strong lake associations. So they got seven or eight out of 10 uh, in their association. Um, but we aren't outreach reaching out just to the Lake Association members. We're reaching out to all the landowners. And so um, so there have been people not part of a Lake Association that have participated. Um, I don't care if there's a Lake Association promoting this or not, but somebody's got to promote it because it's not going to be like Hennepin County says do this. It's going to be your neighbors are saying to do this. So somebody's just got to say, hey, we will talk nice about it. We will share it. And now the app's coming out. And so that's going to really change the sharing, I got to believe. One of the videos is your pets and everybody's got their, you know, from these different lakes and we're going to video more pets. And if your pet's on there, darn right, you're going to share it, right? Because you want everybody to see your pet. Uh, made this video, so we're trying to keep doing that. Even those introductions, we're going to the first real quick five second introduction with our new lakes. We're going to go reach out to those people and get new introductions from them. So then those people will want to share. And so the biggest goal there mm -hmm. is it just goes from neighbor to neighbor, neighbor, whether you're part of the lake association or not. That just seems to be the easiest um, pathway to having somebody promote it. But wouldn't have to be. Thanks, Tony. So just you got a couple. sighted neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's that ties in well with um, with Tina talking about who's the messenger. You know. Yeah. Um. So uh, some kudos from Bill saying nice work, and then also a couple of questions. Jessica and Jeff uh, Forster each have a, a question. The first is, what were the biggest challenges or problems that popped up? during um, during the project and then the, and it really rose well with Jeff's part two of that I would add in rolling it out what would you do differently so what were your challenges what would you do differently Jeff Forrester must do that like you know asking the president a question you know President uh, Bush what would you would you have done different in your for no that's like a common question for the president isn't it okay so the challenges I mean actually Jeff Forrester knows how long ago and Tina does too I think how long ago I started this project um there is a little internal challenge of really do we have to do this let's study it more let's study it more and if you know me I don't want to study it more Tina had all the data right and our communication people have been doing this all the time and it's it's trust me, we put a lot of money into public access inspections and work at the public access and we still will. Too. That's our number one pathway. But you look at it and you go flowering rush, purple loose drive, carp, um, uh, goldfish Th that those are coming to our lakes from public accesses. So we all have a role. We all have this thing and just to get it through kind of the OK, maybe we can do this internally. Well, I know we can't, you know, but OK, let's let's we'll look at that, you know, and and so to get. I mean, it was really kind of getting frustrating. I had to be patient and wait them all out, and I finally figured out a way to do it is you kind of incorporate. Hey, let's just do it at a small level as a pilot. And then everybody could see it a little more instead of what was in my head. It actually was more of a vision but like, OK, we can continue. And that's where we ended up doing the pilot. I love the idea that we did a pilot with three lakes that are strong and and to get 50% on a lake. I mean, I I think it's fantastic, especially since we didn't start at open water. We started in July and towards the end of the year. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that and I like this idea of this competition. Um, so uh, what would I do differently? I, 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 I don't know, you know, I didn't know anything about gamification, I guess. And I didn't know people spend hours and hours on like what five words, five letter words, or whatever that that new thing or, you know, all this type of stuff. So maybe I would incorporate a little more gamification into it. Um, luckily, this is really can be all changed and added and and whatnot. And I, I think going big and into a gamification is maybe a bigger state kind of grant 
that I might be looking at doing down the road instead of using our county egg inspection or county egg um, funding. And so that might be something different, a little more gamification. Um, I like most of the videos. There's one video that I'm changing this year, and that's uh, we take our boat, our lake, uh, we take our boat to other lakes, which is the most common one that we want to teach. I really like the way my wakeboard video turned out, where I just say, first step is to clean, and then we have a a, 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 a dad and his daughter demoing it. And it's fantastic because he's getting he's like, you got to look underneath these wires and you see him pull out a weed, you know, and then oh, the swim platform and he pulls out a weed and look at the prop and he's doing it. And then I say the second step is the drain and then and then they're doing it and you can see her, you know, buffing out the boat. And so we're, you know, we got an intro. I'm just a talking voice. I'm not Hannibal County. Tina, if you notice, wasn't DNR. She's just a, a lake enthusiast. And then to have these people actually demoing it, because one of the things we are finding is. People might do it, but they miss a weed or they miss something. And so it's still a little bit of a violation and they need to learn. You know, there's some tough areas to look and let's look here and let's look there. So there's one video that I'd like to change. I really want to get those intros more lake specific. So it's like, hi, I'm Tony. This is my aquarium tank right here. I love my aquarium tank. I promise I'm never going to dump it in this lake and I hope you do too. take the pledge and I want that. I want the person from Bush Lake and, and so we were running a little short on time on our video and, and we used some kids, which was fantastic. But uh, now I want to take it more personable. So then those people on the new six lakes that we do want to share it. So there's a couple thoughts for you. Stop asking me tough questions, Jeff. It's a good one. And if you didn't see in the chat, he does have an undergrad degree in journalism. So, you know, king of cool. I like that. We'll end up with one last question. I know we're at break time, but really quickly, um, Kelsey added she really likes that there is such great peer to peer success with the pledges and was wondering if you'd had any folks looking to get more involved in AIS prevention beyond the pledge level. Did anyone step up and above and beyond so far? Um, Weaver Lake has stepped out, yes, because they actually. They, they sent out like three little letters to everybody on the lake. Plus, they invited me to their end of the year banquet. And now he's going to do it again and have the computer right there for the people that haven't taken it to sign up and do all that type of stuff. So yeah, they really went above and beyond. Um, and then I, I got to believe, you know, from my conversations with the other lakes, I think it's going to go really well. It's interesting though, I did push this out to a few bays on Lake Minnetonka crickets. So you're going to have lakes that are, they get it, right? We're part of it. We care. We're going to do it. And other lakes say, no, it's everybody else's fault, not ours. And I guess don't fight that. Just be patient. And when I have, you know, 40% of my other lakes is legendary, you know, then they're going to be like wanting, you know, cool. Oh, well, maybe we should do this. So I think I, I just, you know, that's more of a just a patient approach. Can a reporting of a doc searches be added? Absolutely anything you wanted can be added. I do have a uh, in the thing you can report a, a possible AIS and it's got the DNR kind of information. We could really upgrade that, make it something cool where they could, you know, really give us the specifics, but I didn't want to do more than what we have already with Ed Maps and whatever we're using now. Um, but like. There is a, a Boundary Waters group that's interested in doing this. And one of the things they're big on is fire, right? And boy, did that excite the consultant. Um, this consultant happened to be just a half a mile away from that Colorado fire with all those homes. And she's like, oh, we could do this. And so it's all upgradable to your situation. You might not like my questions. You might not like my activities. You might not like our, our county colors. Um, you, you can't use our age, but this can be changed to however you want it. Maybe you only want three questions. Maybe you only want one. I maybe you want a hundred. Maybe you want videos that are a half an hour long. Maybe you don't. This can change to what works in your area if you want to participate. And 
I just think it would be cool if it went statewide. But I like the idea that each area, because what works in northern Minnesota is going to be completely different than metro than south. It just is. And I almost think if I ever did it, I'd have to have a specific one for Lake Minnetonka because it's a completely different beast. And I don't know what to do when we get into apartment buildings, right? Or multi family residents. Um, and, you know, it's so different. They they don't put in their own docks. You know, they have people do it. So the questions could probably be quite a bit different if you get into a situation like that. So awesome. Annual, Thanks, annual Cody. Contest. Yep. Yep. Annual contest. Trivia questions, badges, <laughs> all that stuff. I don't do it. I, I just had my first flip phone uh, removed and now I have an iPhone at COVID. So, you know, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Um, always fun to see those videos and see what you've done with um, bringing community-based social marketing to the local level. That's awesome. Um, so we're going to take a quick break here and come back at, let's go with 2.05. Um, we'll come back at 2.05 PM for Justin uh, to talk about the Clean In Clean Out uh, pilot project. So I encourage everyone to get up and stretch and take a break from your screens for the next 10 minutes. And we'll see you at 2.05.
Justin Townsend, if you're there and want to start sharing your screen, we can get that rolling. Looking good. How's that look? Awesome. Except you all are on my third screen now. <laughs> Let's get you back. All right. There we are. Wonderful. I am Justin Townsend. I am the AIS coordinator for Ramsey County. And uh, this is the first presentation I'm giving on the CBSM grant results that we did. So apologies, I am not as polished as Tony is, and he was supposed to go last, and I was going to set the bar really low. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Um, so check in, check out. Here we are. So uh, we're brainstorming a few years back about what we can do uh, with filling that gap in those times where inspectors are not available. We have a pretty robust inspection program. Um, we want to continue that, of course, but with uh, that gap in time of, you know, 4 to 6 a.m. after 9 p.m. when people are still getting out on the lake, but we're not really able to be there safely. Uh, so we're thinking some different ideas. Also, we have invested in a lot of other things like the tool stations. I think a couple of you have probably seen the tool stations out that we've put in the um, and then the CD3 station that we've installed at one of our lakes. So we're trying a little bit of everything. And then, of course, we have the law on our side. So, you know, what are we missing here? What's what do we need to to get people to to do this every single time, even with the best of intentions. And kind of what Tina said in the beginning, just because someone knows what they're doing, doesn't mean they're gonna do it every time. So we needed the reminder and that knowledge every time. So you don't exactly have to think about it every time. So there's our tool stations, if you're already aware, that'll come in later. So continue to brainstorm. What if we created a web app, web-based app that anybody could log into swipe through what they should be doing, how they should be doing it, and, um, you know, pictures easy, something super simple. So it started with that picture on the left. We just did some Adobe InDesign, and then uh, later on got a little bit more fancy with the artwork. So back in about 2019 now, we started working with CD3 to develop this. We needed somebody to host it and and do all the coding and other fancy footwork that needed to be done. Um, so a lot of back end work, we got it developed. Um, as you can see in there, a whole lot of steps. So based on the different tools that we had at the different sites, the different boats and watercraft that can come in, um, there's a lot of different iterations of how this would look so what are we up to 415 possible steps so uh, somebody coming in to our, our turtle lake with a cd3 station uh, with a personal watercraft is different than a uh, personal watercraft coming in on white bear lake that has a tool station that i created um, just ad hoc together uh, so we had that in place and um, we wanted to expand on that with the community based social marketing. How do we get people to take this up and and use it as a CBSM tool? So I need the indivisible behavior as we talked about. We ID the barrier. I need ways to reduce that barrier. Um, found our end state of what we wanted out of this. And then, uh, of course, we wanted to make it social make that commitment in there, put your name on it. And that's what you see at the bottom there is that final page of um, what a lot of you have seen already as the web-based app. And I should say, if you're at all interested, you can go anytime ramseycounty.us slash AIS. Anytime when I'm talking here and you can check out the app, but I'm not talking about the app so much today. I'm talking more about the integration of the community-based social marketing piece of it. Um, 
So what do we want out of this? So answers to our question on the previous slide. We want people to inspect their boats before and after launching each time, even if you think it's clean. And we know that people barrier is, you know, you forget, you get busy. Um, you don't know what it quite means to inspect. Like, yeah, I inspected my boat. Well, did you look under the bunks? Oh, no, I didn't think that was part of it. Or you don't know what clean is. Is all that water out of your bait buckets and, and your live wells? Oh, no, I didn't think about that. Uh, so we wanted to reduce that barrier by walking through it every time. You know, you got kids screaming in the back. We got to go. It's hot out. Um, a lot of conflict out at the boat launches these days. They're super busy. We want to just have you to be able to run through it and not have to think about anything else but doing the task at hand. So the end state would be to have everybody either inspected or do this check in, check out to more or less get to 100% of boats being checked in some way and confirming that check. Now, again, the big caveats with the stars on the bottom, this does not take the place of inspectors. I don't want to take the place of inspectors. It doesn't allow skipping an inspector and it doesn't allow you to jump in line, anything like that. Not the intention here. We want to just supplement in those areas where we can't get to uh, people with inspectors. So how did it work? Not that well. <laughs> um, we'll talk about some of our personal barriers that uh, uh, to this, but you can see in here, uh, here's the lakes that we launched it at. Um, the best one that we had was 57 users and I'll have some stuff on the next slide to show you. But then we had options where you could commit. Yes, I signed the box. Um, I've already made that commitment, but I'm reaffirming it or I'm not interested. You can see some interesting kind of number dynamics going on. And some people that were saying I did not want to commit kind of interested me <laughs> you're going to go through that whole process and then you're not interested i don't know so i don't know what this quite means we didn't get around to studying that a lot of these numbers we just pulled back in october november between grant closeout and stuff we haven't had a chance to analyze it room big and i don't know if there's the numbers there to really analyze it in a in a big way so how does that compare um Real rough numbers. You just did some kind of back of the napkin calculations. Like if I get X amount of boats per hour when I'm inspecting at this lake, can we extrapolate that out a little bit just to get a rough idea of what we're looking at, at least proportionally? Um, so you can see at a, a lake like, say, let's go Johanna again, or, uh, or Josephine again, sorry. So to about 1,300 boats in a year, give or take. And, um, oh, sorry, I was using Johanna before. So 2,325, we got about 57 of those. So you're talking like one to 2%, but that base is there. And we learned a lot of things that we shouldn't do and things that we need to do and how we gear up for the next round to move forward and get that uptake. Uh, Budget just wanted to talk to budget real quick what we we're looking at. Um, 5,000 worth of grant and about 12,800 in kind. So it was. Uh, it was a good chunk of money spent on getting this going. And, uh, you know, a lot of that is. Uh, signage one time. One time expenses, but I think our biggest expense was staff time trying to get uptake with this and moving forward that is going to be what we need we need to get people out there which i'll talk about here so the challenge uh, i think i've mentioned this in the past personal opinion you want uptake make this mandated somehow get it in so that people have to do this if an inspector is not present they have to do this. Um, lack of staffing and retention was a big challenge for us this year, especially people that were comfortable doing that outreach that needed to be done to get people to use it the first time. A lot of these smaller launches, we get a lot of returning people. 
this is their home lake. Trying to get those reach those couple people so that we get repeat customers and then they can also talk to the people uh, was really tough. Uh, budget timelines, messaging, signage, figuring all that out along with trying to just get people out there and, you know, with an iPad and say, here, use this. Tell me what you think was really hard. Um, and then we had a, a messaging problem in the beginning where we talked about, and I've talked about this uh, with Doug um, up at Sea Grant, the, the clean in, clean out message versus um, check in, check out. We found we were using the clean in, clean out messaging um, due to some things I won't get into here, but my preference would be check in, check out. You know, people recognize that as kind of a Facebook thing where you're here, you check in no matter what you 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 think you're clean. That's fine. You still got to check in. And uh, to the second bullet point here, the the next bullet point. People thought they were clean, so they didn't think that they had to pledge. Like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm clean. I know I'm clean. Did you go through the steps? No, <laughs> but I know I'm clean. And uh, much like another challenge that we saw is much like we see with inspectors is just people not wanting to take the time. You know, the yeah, 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 yeah. Let's uh, let's move this along. Let's go, go, go. Um, so those are going to be some of our hurdles moving forward of how do we get uptake with this? We're going to have to address those. It's going to take staff time and it's going to take money and um, we got to be dedicated to doing that. Uh, so next steps, I've been still thinking about this. If you have ideas, send them to me. Would love to talk more, but I think taking this as one lake at a time, taking one lake, getting uptake at that one lake and seeing how that functions would be valuable for us. Take take a lake that's manageable, smaller in size, um, you know, single access in and out, that sort of thing. Uh, Possibly focus on incentives. We talked to the CD3 a little bit about developing that this year. It didn't come to fruition, but we laid a lot of the groundwork for being able to text somebody a coupon if they completed this. Use more influencers. So this year we used Girl of 10,000 Lakes. Jenny Anderson, if any of you are familiar with her, she is a social media influencer. Um, it got great uptake, got great numbers um, on her end of things, the Instagram, YouTube, whole social world. I think there's something there, but more importantly is that next bullet point of, you know, we've got to get out there and get lake associations to support this and say all of our association members are going to use this anytime they leave the lake. They might not leave the lake much, but when they do, it could be a huge risk. Um, Tournament organizers tried to do that this year a little bit, didn't get much uptake. Um, lake service providers would be another one. If we can get them to use that every time, that's th that would be an, a great way to use the community to support this. And then, um, you know, just using any other fishing groups and, and anybody who has some power over the watercraft users to make this mandatory before we as a county or anybody else made this mandatory. I think you're going to get better uptake with that. And then, as I said before, more in-person promotion of the app, period. I think people and getting in people's face and saying, here it is, use it, tell me what you think, uh, use it every time is the only way. Signs get overlooked. They're necessary, but they get overlooked, um, especially when you're trying to launch something from zero. You need to get out there and get it into people's periphery or else it, it completely gets ignored. Do I have one more? No, that is it. That is it for the presentation. So um, happy to take any questions. Um, as I say, we're still analyzing a lot of this, but I really hope that gave you some idea of how the CBSM aspect of this whole pilot project worked. Thanks, Justin. If folks have questions, you want to throw them in the chat? 
yeah, shout it out, whatever people want to do. Yeah. Interactive is better. We're getting too <laughs> quiet here. Oh, sure. I'm trying to think of a question about the evaluation piece and how that was important and how that will inform your next steps. Because that's a big, big important piece of community based social marketing is doing evaluation of some sort. So um, I know you did some observations and interviews with people at the access. Um, you could maybe uh, talk about that. Yeah, for sure. That was really interesting. I, we have an education contractor, Don Pape, who um, actually lived close to one of the lakes, which was really handy for us. So she just went out and she said, I'd go around with a clipboard and start asking questions and people would clam up. But if I just, you know, stood there with a notebook and like I was painting something or, you know, sketching something and just said, oh, hey, what do you think about this? She got a whole lot more answers and that's where a lot of those bullet points that you saw uh, i have in the presentation here came from that's where she said people said oh yeah it's a good idea but i'm already clean ah you know we missed that boat so i think you know again it goes back to that we need to get staff time in there and pay for some staff time to get out and and engage with people because this is just this is one of those pieces that's not going to be launched online it's an online piece that needs to be launched in person we still have a minute or two if anyone else has a question as they listen to that presentation Oh, here we go. Doug Jensen, lots of great groundwork done here. Uh, besides folks at the accesses, it really seems to him that there needs to be a public communications campaign tied in so that people recognize what they see at the access. Our surveys continue to show what media and strategies are the most important for watercraft users. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, any comments on that, Justin? Uh, I just uh, absolutely agree. I think that's where, um, you know, the limited budgets come in, chicken and egg theory. Do you go with, do you launch the program? Do you get the signage out there and do you work with the people and burn up your budget on that? Or do you try to do a little bit half and half? And I think this is where launching it at one or two lakes is, it would be uh, a much better idea. So you can focus on that, do that media blitz have the money for that media blitz, but also get out there and have adequate signage and have adequate staffing to support it. And Bruce uh, from Beltrami says it makes him think of a web-based survey, so no, there's no don download. Um, check in without GPS. Could you make it similar to the DNR inspection survey and then promote it as a self-inspection? Yeah, it's something CD3 has been working on. I mean, all the bones are there, so you they could make it like that. And they've been talking about that with the boundary waters. Um, you know, around here, obviously, cell phone access is not an issue, so um, that's not going to be my burden to bear. But you can make it so that it would be downloadable. And as soon as you or the, you could fill out the application and it would submit itself as soon as you got to adequate cell service. Thanks. Tina, do we want to transition and pick up one minute? Yeah, let's do that. Um, oh, one quick last question I see here that came up for Justin. Um, how much time did it take for someone to check in or check out? That's a good question. I didn't pull those data, but I'm sure it's available on the back end. If you who asked that one, share and if you want to um, shoot me your email, I will try to find that out. Perfect. All right. Oh. 
loading here. Okay. Um, I put the presenter contact information into the chat for everyone as well. Um, so that people can get in contact with us if you have more questions. So now we'll transition to Bill with Itasca uh, to talk about his five star Lake Service Provider initiative. So Bill, share away. Oh, thank you. Just making sure I get the right screen on here. Kind of tough acts to follow. Tony and Justin, I mean, boy, talk about a team. Okay. <clears throat> of course, good, I don't. I, I, okay, thank you. Um, just one second. There's too many things I can adjust here. That's what the problem is. Okay, jumping in right now. Um, my name is Bill Granches. I'm the Itasca County AIS Program Coordinator. And what I'm here to talk about today is <clears throat> our Itasca Five Star Program. And in particular, I want to zero in on our league service provider uh, five star program. This has been going on now for about four years, I suppose, um, and it's being adjusted and tweaked uh, bit by bit, and we're getting more acceptance as we go along. The main idea behind the um, five star program is to create trust based relationships and to raise AIS awareness and the quality of AIS safeguards. Um, we want to um, build positive uh, relationships. Um, now, how do we do that? Well, um, to get these lake service providers to participate, um, we say that um, in return, the AIS program is going to uh, have lake associations um, market um, to you. We're going for the customer base. We're going to drive more customers to you. Um, that's kind of the the light bulb that went off. It's like, gee, how am I going to get lake associ uh, lake service providers to actually want to do things? What what do they want? Business. They want more business. <clears throat> so the key to this is leveraging the existing power um, of lake associations uh, and the individual lakeshore buyers. That's the whole key to this is um, driving business to um, lake service providers that are AIS savvy, um, that um, agree to sign up to this contract. And um, I think we all know, if, well, we probably should all know that there are way too many lake service providers that are not even DNR permitted. Um, and even those that are might not be as AIS savvy as we would hope that they would be. So we encourage customers to um, use the five star program. And uh, the hope is, and this is actually working, um, lake service providers <clears throat> don't want to risk losing the business. Now, of course, the key end to this, that's interesting, is to have your lake associations um, get involved. That's the whole key to this. You have to have buy-in from lake associations and from the property owners. They have to actually contact their lake service providers, whoever it is that's taking out their docks or doing that work in the lake for them, and ask them, are you DNR certified? Uh, if you're not, why not? Um, what was the last lake you were in? Um, what did you do to decontaminate your equipment from coming here? Are you uh, uh, participating in the Itasca Five Star Lake Service Provider Program? Why not? And then you want them to, if if their lake so if their lake service provider isn't um, uh, participating or up to those standards, we want them to switch lake service providers. And we've had. Um, limited success with that. We've, <laughs> we've actually had a one lake service provider said, uh, I want to drop out of the program because I can't take any more customers now. I've gotten too many customers. Um, it's a difficult sell to some lake associations. Uh, as you probably all know, you want to communicate with everyone in your county. Well, for me anyway, the easiest way is through Arcola. And then Arcola 
your lake association contact points, you rely on someone within the lake association to disseminate that email. Well, the person that's responsible for disseminating that email doesn't like your program for whatever reason, then it's it's hard to get these uh, the message out to these people. Um, but that said, um, again, the key underlying thing here is you have to have Lake Association buy-in. That's kind of a side effect of this program too, is it's strengthened relationships um, with uh, different Lake Associations. So what is our approach to um, our lake service providers. Now, a lot of this is pretty dry because it's basically straight out of the letter that I sent to our uh, five star. We're asking them to um, partake in um, uh, this initiative that's intended to promote your business to lake association and river shoreline property owners and to prevent aquatic invasive species from being transported from one body to another. Um, a task of five star lake service providers agree to implement the following AIS safeguards. Um, in addition to earning and maintaining DNR permitted status. So the contract that we send these people and we actually do ask them to sign it and return us uh, this contract. So it is a signed contract. Um, ask them to do five things. I believe it is. First is that they agree to keep an eye on and know what the infested lake list is. Now here in Tassa County, we keep our own list because we have a lot of things that we track that's not necessarily on the DNR list, um, but uh, we let everyone know, okay, here's the, um, the address for the DNR AIS infested list. And these are always sent, uh, any documentation always has these links into it. So we really like sending by email because that way you've got the hot links in it and then people can just start clicking on everything. The second thing we ask them to do is that um, equipment that is in any water will always go through an inspection before it goes into another body of water. <clears throat> Again, these are common sense. You would think that everybody would do it but you'd be surprised how many people don't. And you know, you have Billy Bob, who is a great guy um, putting in docks and, and lifts. Well, actually that was me, Oof, man, that was a long time ago, like 10 years ago. Um, I didn't really care that much about, well, okay, it was longer than 10 years. I didn't really care that much about AS at the time. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. But then when some people in my Lake Association said, hey, Bill, you're, you're supposed to be registered. I got registered and then when I took the class with Rich Rosenka, I got scared to death. Um, not because Rich is such an imposing guy, although he can be, um, but I actually listened to what was going on and it, it scared me to death. So um, I know from personal experience that um, not all these people are caring about this. I never went from one lake to another. So um, the other thing here is that uh, I always make sure that the, um, Lake service providers have my contact information. So um, that's our AIS hotline number there. Um, gear that can hold standing water that cannot be drained prior to entering another lake and are coming from intest, uh, intested, infested waters um, may need uh, to be decontaminated. What we're saying is if, it's, if it holds water and if it's going from an infested lake, you will get it decontaminated. <clears throat> So um, they either, uh, we let them know where our mobile decon units are, or we've had very good success of having lake service providers call us and say, we need a decon. And we either tell them where we're going to be the next day, or we can actually send one of our um, roaming uh, Landa units to a convenient location and we'll meet them there and we'll actually decon the dock or decon their, their barge. Um, I don't know if any guys have ever deconned a barge, but oof, man, especially if you got to climb up and get on the carpet. And well, anyway, I digress. Um, so we're asking them to make sure that their equipment is always clean before it goes from one lake to another. And if it's uh, to, uh, we really stress to get it deconned. Um, and um, here's the here's the point that is usually the most contentious with lake associations and individual property owners. Um, we're asking that, and this is careful, very carefully worded. I agree that the Atasca AIS program, oops, I skipped the wrong slide. Um, sorry. 
anyway, so the third one was about using the, um, uh, making sure that everything was going to undergo a thorough inspection to be decontaminated. And then the fourth one was, and this is the, the one that usually raises the most objections from people. And this is the one that's carefully worded. I agree that the Atasca AIS program may from time to time schedule, that's the key word, schedule a visit and review my operations to determine that my firm is abiding by this agreement and offer recommendations for its improvement. Um, that's a key thing. I mean, we how do we know that these like that these guys are actually doing it? How do we know that they have this equipment? Let's see their facilities. Um, as I started with, this is building trust, and you don't build trust by having somebody sign a contract and then say, "Well, I'm going to show up unannounced and I'm going to inspect all your equipment." So. The trade-off here is, is that, yeah, this is a little watered down there, but it is still asking for an agreement and it is carefully worded. It's If we're saying schedule, then we're not going to barge in on you. We're letting you know that we'll give you an opportunity to set up a time when we can come. Um, each year we've done this, we've added to this. Uh, it used to be um, uh, that we'd give them a call. Uh, ask them about their program. Now it's we're saying that we'd like to schedule a visit where this year we're actually going to go in and start visiting these people. And number five, um, what we do um, is we offer to pay their fees, the $50 fee, which I believe lasts for three years. If you're in a task, yeah, well, first of all, um, we're going to pay the initial registration fee for anyone that is not DNR certified as a lake service provider to become DNR certified. Um, going through that training, it, it worked for me. It scared me. I learned a lot. Uh, it's absolutely worth $50 for each lake service provider. Um, then in addition to that, the people um, that do become five star, we will pay your registration fee, the $50 every three years um, for being a five-star member. That's the contract. Um, and again, the most important thing here is five-star only works if we are successful in causing property owners to use five-star firms. And we've had pretty good success with that. We do, um, well, actually, let me just go right into it. How do we get the lake associations and individuals to, to implement this? Um, by the way, everything here, I have all these documents, I, I'll give freely to anybody. I'm, I've sent some things to Stearns. I'm um, very optimistic with working with CAS for having this program go across borders because there are lake service providers in Atasca that go south and go into CAS and vice versa. Um, so anything I have here, um, these are all available. I, I kind of left in these, the the uh, the bit.ly. So that's another thing we do. We keep everything on bit.ly. That way, the uh, the version is always the most current one. Um, anybody can click on it. But I can send you these files if you want to set this up. Um, so um, we encourage lake service providers, uh, popular on your lake, while well, we're asking lake associations to do this. Ask your board members to discuss and determine which dock installer lake service providers are popular with property owners on your lake. Organize both um, your board members to actually call those lake service providers and ask them to join the, the five-star program. Um, then what I do is I, I send out a sample letter to these lake associations. Now what I did, this was in an email that I sent out on February 1st. I also followed up with a snail mail version of it, but the email's better because it's got all the live links in it. Um, so I give them a sample letter that they could very easy to edit. So it's minimal work. Everything is right there handed to you. You just modify a few little lines in there. And um, then I also give them a copy of the invitation which I mailed out versus uh, using uh, US Postal Service. Um, what, the last day in January. Uh, so Lake Service Providers got them on February 1st. And then I followed up with emails and then I have another mailing that's gonna go out in two weeks that I follow through on that. So um, basically it's giving everybody everything they need. Um, 
Encourage your lake association members, your board members, and other property owners on your lake to move their businesses to five-star LSPs. That's really important. There's nothing wrong with telling your lake service provider, um, Billy Bob, you're a great guy, but you, you're just you're not DNR certified, and I'm really worried about AIS, and I don't think that you're savvy enough or you know enough about it. So un unless you get certified, I'm going to have to take my business elsewhere. Um, they'll get it. Um, and they're not going to do it with everybody. I still know people that are not DNR certified that are still putting in um, um, docs and everything for people on lakes that have very strong lake associations that have strong buy-in. But it's just like stop smoking or wearing seatbelts. You're not going to you're not going to battle a thousand. Um, but I'll take the wins that I do get. Um, as I said before, you get your Lake Association board members who have the clout there to, to uh, personally contact these Lake service providers. Um, now you can publicize five-star information in their newsletters, social media, uh, at board meetings, membership meetings, at events, and um, you really want them to move their business to five-star Lake service providers. That's how this whole thing works. Um, if they say they prefer to stick with their existing lake service provider, then you really want to ask that they move to be um, five star and at a minimum that they want to be DNR certified. And that's the law after all. Why wouldn't they? And oh, by the way, Atasca County AIS program, they'll pay your fees for you. So why wouldn't you want to do that? So uh, we've been limited uh, in our success with that. Um, we give them some sample la uh, language for their newsletters, websites, social media. Um, as an example, if not careful, anyone moving from one lake or river to another can introduce a new invasive to our lake and to your lake shore, including zebra mussels, starry stonewort, and spiny water flea. Are you planning to hire seasonal installation removal of your dock or lift? Please help prevent introduction and prevent the limit of aquatic invasive species, move your business to an Itasca five-star lake service provider. Uh, and then there's a link on it right there for the for the bitlies. Now, um, one of the things that we promise to do for these five stars are that we promote them. And one way that we promote them is every year, um, well, not every year, for the last four years, as part of our AIS summit that we do every year, which we're not doing this year, um, which I'll get into later. Uh, every year as part of that, we send out these postcards. And this is what the front of the postcard looks like. And these postcards go out to 5,000 um, Lakeshore property owners. Why 5,000? Because that's basically what the budget uh, supported. So um, this is what the back of the card is. And I am I love QR codes. If you don't use QR codes, you should, especially at, at your... Uh, uh, at your, your landings on your signage. They're great if you can get away with it. Anyway, so we send this out to 5,000 um, Lakeshore property owners. Uh, postage was about $1,200. Uh, mailing and printing was about $745. So it's less than $2,000. We can reach 5,000 people directly um, with this message and tell them, you know, please hire this five-star people. Um, now, what other results do we have? Well, um, as I said, it's building a trust-based relationship. I never heard from lake service providers before we started this program. Now, it's not uncommon for me to get a phone call or Chris Evans, uh, he's my control and monitoring um, guy, he's the assistant AS coordinator here, to get a call from a five-star lake service provider um, and say, it, gee, I found this, What what is this? Or um, well, yeah, this is unintended, but it happens. Such and such lake service provider went from Sand Lake directly into Little Jesse Lake, and I know they didn't stop and drain their equipment, and they're five-star. What are you going to do about that? Well, I'll get to that. That's one of the problems we have. Um, we had a um, very popular five-star lake service provider that, uh, and all my inspectors know about the five-star program. And so at Deer Lake, uh, that's where we have a, um, a successful self-serve 24-hour, seven-day-a-week decon station that also has um, pressurized hot water 
that is only for DNR certified level twos. Anyway, um, this lake service provider showed up and as he's backing down the ramp, the inspector notices that he's got water coming out of the pontoons on his barge. So we're like, uh, uh, no, 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 you, you go up to the uh, top of the landing there and you make sure that these pontoons are, are drained. And then the guy goes, oh yeah, I know I got a little bit of leak in there. And um, yeah, I drain it out every time when they get full enough that it starts dragging the boat, the pontoon down. Mm, no, that didn't fly. So um, there, uh, uh, letter was sent from the lake association president to that lake service provider saying hey you signed a contract and then by the end of the week that lake service provider had actually gone and gotten the pontoons welded and it didn't leak anymore um, we now routinely get phone calls for decons at centralized locations um, it'd be great if i can get buy-in on this idea of self-serve decon stations where they could actually be at a location where lake service providers are asking for them um, instead of where the lake associations that are sponsoring them want to put them, which is fine um, to get them started. Um, but anyway, we routinely, um, we have AIS decons, they're all mobile, um, are the ones that we own, and we stationed two of them at our highest um, uh, usage uh, zebra mussel infested lakes. And the other one, we 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 let roam to where particular needs are, depending on like if it's musky opener, we send them to a musky lake that has zebra mussels. Or if a lake service provider says, hey, I, I have a dock that I want to, uh, uh, that I just got, and I'd like to have a decon so uh, we can get that 21 day uh, dry period going, um, we'll actually go to wherever they took the dock out and we'll, we'll decon it for them. Um, also, I've had one lake service provider uh, apply for a CAP grant. That's our community action program, matching grant program we use our AS funds for. So we paid for half of their North Star hot water um, um, pressure washer, which is installed in their shop, which is great for them in the shop, doesn't help them when they're out in the field. So they call us when they're out in the field. If they're gonna, if they have to go from a zebra mussel infested lake to a non-zebra mussel infested lake, they'll call us and we we do our best to meet them there. If not, then well, we just try to do the best we can. And the result is that um, after this time, this is from 2021, we have 24 five stars, nine of which are lake service providers, two marine dealers, which I'm going to give them a plug, Grand Rapids Marine and Ray's uh, Sport and Marine, um, five resorts, three landscape firms, and five others. Um, we have a uh, rental firm, paddle hoppers that's uh, right here on the Mississippi. They, they rent out uh, kayaks, canoes, paddle boards, um, cross-country transport. Everybody knows R&B Labs and PLM. They're all five stars within our program. So I kind of really went through that really fast. I'm sure I skipped a lot of stuff. I took some notes here, problems, buy-in from lake associations. I think I touched on that. And <laughs> what am I gonna do now that I've had lake service providers and someone else now say the same lake service provider, we know that we saw this person go from this zebra mussel infested lake to this other lake. And we know that they didn't stop and drain their equipment, clean their equipment off. So um, that's a tough one because, yes, yeah, certainly we can remove their five star certification, but then do we actually advertise that we remove their five star? I, I don't think I can do that, but we're going to try um, contacting them directly. And instead of the um, um, AIS summit that we do every year. This year we decided that instead we're going to do a focus group. We're going to invite four lake service fighters in and say, what's working? What's not working? What do you need from us? What can we do to help you more? I mean, we can, we've offered tools, ideas for ways of scheduling. Um, anyway, it's, it's, we're going to try that focus group and we've kind of already decided this one guy that isn't, um, abiding by his contract, I'm going to make sure that he's one of those people that we're going to call in. Um, the other thing, and I keep talking about this in April, golly, this, <laughs> golly, gee whiz, we um, really want to do it this year. Um, we have these self-serve decon stations. We have one uh, that's fully functional on Deer Lake and uh, general public, it's got all the tools there. Uh, it's got lighting, it's got instructions, and it's got fresh water. 
so people like a garden hose can do their own decon work. It's also got a shed there that's locked and it has a uh, hot water pressure washer system that you have to be uh, level two certified. We wanna add five star lake service providers and we also wanna add fishing guides uh, that are five star to be able to use that equipment because they've all expressed great interest in be able to do this type of work, um, especially at Deer Lake. And then this year, we're also bringing one online. Well, the Wabana Chain of Lakes Association and Wabana Township is bringing one online at the Wabana Town Hall. Um, so we'd also like to make that available to five-star registered uh, lake service providers to be able to use that as well. Okay, um, last but not least, I wanna open this up for questions. So any questions at this time? My question is, how do I get my screen back? Where was I? Here I am. Okay. Okay, so that's that's my presentation. Warts and all. Thanks, Bill. I'm watching the chat for you and see what comes in. Anyone have questions to follow up on Bill's presentation? What's the longest 10 to 20 seconds for us extroverts up here, Bill? Oh, I'm loving it. <laughs> People, the process and type. All right. Uh, so Bruce asked, uh, oh, website for information. Uh, oh, for the, for the bit.ly. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Bruce. <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Um, tell you what you can do. You can go to... Um, atascaais.info, which takes you directly to the SWCD uh, AIS webpage and look under five star and anywhere in there, uh, there'll be all the links. That's everything is, is right there. So you get those bitlies there. Bitly, thank you, Dana. All right, uh, Justin asks, is there a contract language you would suggest for recourse if an LSP does not follow the rules as you talked about? That's a good question. Anybody have suggestions? Um, my focus has been on building the partnerships. And what I don't have an ironclad, um, thou shalt not do this promises um, and repercussions, I figure so far has been more than offset by the gains in, I now know who the lake service providers are. I now have confirmation, uh, uh, consultations with all these different businesses all the time now too. And it's also given me a, another way of communicating with lake associations as well. So, um, but it is becoming, thank you, Tina. It is um, becoming more of a priority. And we did say this was the year that we were going to actually do those visits. So, um, yeah, I, I don't have an answer for you. Um, but the language will become um, more stern, more binding um, as we feel that we are gaining more acceptance. And right now with only, um, I say nine lake service providers, I'd like to get that up. I don't have any measure of how many people are, um, well, I guess we do, um, lake service providers that are registered with the DNR. Has that actually gone up since we've done this? Um, I think uh, April, I, I looked at numbers two years in a row and it was really kind of hard to tell because we lost some, gained some. Um, yeah, it's trickier than you'd think to follow just because of change of hands. A whole suite of things that we won't go into right now in our last few minutes. But yeah, I'd love to keep talking about that with you. Um, Dana, uh, asked here um, or made, made a good suggestion I think to it would be a great question to ask the folks that you, the businesses you're bringing into your focus group what's fair recourse that's a and great I, idea it, it's a real challenge to figure out what is fair and what do you um, and what route you're going to go because like you said you focused on building relationships and so um, yeah, that's probably another conversation you and I can have about the regulatory side of things and the, the follow up. Um, yeah, it's it's one thing to tell your county commissioners that you're you're driving business to these 
to these uh, employers in the county, it's a whole nother thing to say that you're um, penalizing a business. And I don't know that I want to go there, but I think right. Dana, Dana, you got, this is great. If you ask them what the recourse is, and if that then is part of the contract that they sign, there you go. By the way, Dana, if people don't know, she's the Cass County AIS coordinator. Other questions? We've got a couple minutes and I don't know, um, Tina, do you want me to uh, broaden this out? Just any questions at this point in our last five minutes? Not just yeah. about whole session, but just in general, we have a few minutes together. Things that have been percolating in your brains as you've been absorbing everything. Let's see, what do we have? Russ, uh, <laughs> Russ, yeah, they keep each other on the tight and narrow if they come up with their own recourse. Yes, exactly. Self asking your. That's a great child. idea. <laughs> What's oh, fair yeah. before? And uh, Bill, you can, you're still sharing your screen if you want to drop that. People can um, jump in on their cameras if they'd like to have these last few minutes of discussion. There's April. Hi, April. Hey, I was trying <laughs> to stay out of the way. But it would be great to see faces if folks are willing mm -hmm. the last couple of minutes here. There's something wrong with my camera. It makes me look like I'm old, overweight, and have bags under my eyes. It's, 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 it, it's something in the settings. I don't, I don't know. Probably a filter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> oh, look at all these smiling faces. Excellent. So I know it's not a ton of time, but is there something people, as you're coming on camera and looking at faces, is there something you've been wondering or thinking throughout the session? I know one thing I've been wondering is getting access to all Tina's data. So I'm very eager to see that. Um, uh, just to be blunt, this stuff works. Um, it's, 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 it's great. Well, Tina doesn't have anything going on. She'll have it done in like, you know, like. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah, uh, all the reports and everything are up on um, our website. The ones that aren't up there yet are the hobbyist survey and the um, community asset mapping report and spreadsheet. So we're still working to get those uploaded. But I'd, ha I'd be happy to set up one on one meetings with anyone on this call about how you can incorporate behavior change work into your AIS programming, because it's just been very eye-opening in the work that I've been doing um, to just learn about these projects uh, and learn about these strategies and see how effective they are and the information that they've gathered. Um, even if it's just a few commitments here or a few surveys there, it still really opens opens the doors to opportunities to improving our programs and communicating those improvements to the people that make decisions too. Any more money on the horizon? Not that I'm aware of, but we'll definitely reach out if and when there is. Those were one-time funds for the, the pilot programs uh, through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, so. Really good question. Perennial question. Do you have any handouts or graphics on behavior change and strategies in AIS from Kendra? We have my PowerPoint that I can share with everyone. That's the most up to date um, since we're adding uh, the information about the hobbyists. I think that's a really important uh, pathway. Well, two pathways, um, both the aquarium and water garden trades to cover. Um, so Hopefully soon <laughs> we can get some more, but right now the behavior change website has um, a, a short handout at, linked at the top of that page. That's a good reference for the angling and uh, shoreland owner ones. So, but I like the idea of creating some more shorter graphics and ways for people to um, incorporate behavior change into their programs. Tina, I see we're at our last minute. 
Do you have closing thoughts or wrap up for us? Um, just wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to be here today. Thank our presenters uh, for sharing their awesome projects and their willingness to answer more questions uh, as they come through. And um, looking forward to the next three of these workshops coming up in the next month and a half-ish or so. Uh, it's my favorite thing to do is host these kinds of workshops um, and see people connecting uh, with one another on all the um, awesome work that's going on throughout the state. So if there's any other ways that I can help connect all of you with one another, please reach out, uh, happy to discuss that as well. So with that, it's 3 p.m. Have a lovely afternoon and hope to see you on Thursday for our next workshop. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you.